G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake and today I'm revisiting the Crawling Corridor Sniper Base with two main goals, to test out some modifications that were suggested on the original video and then, once the design is settled, to work through the process on how to build it from scratch. The first change that was suggested was to remove the first two rows of electric fence. The intent is that this will allow more zombies into the corridor at the start, which will hopefully mean that we are hitting more heads and less legs. There's no downside to this change that I can think of, it's a great suggestion, and we'll know if it doesn't work if we get too many zombies making it out the other end. Since we've removed the electric fence, I'll also remove the dart traps and trip wires, since the zombies will just race through this section. The second suggestion was to add additional lighting to the back of the corridor, to make it easier to see what's going on. This is also a great suggestion, with no downside, and since there's now space here from the last change, I'll put in a couple of spotlights instead. Those two were pretty easy, but most of the other suggestions related to the loot bag drop and better ways to handle the zombie corpses and loot bags to ensure that the headshots are always visible and the corpses are out of the way. One question came up that I had to go and test to verify was around zombie corpses and if they count as a zombie still when dealing with AP ammo. For those that don't know, with maxed out penetrator perk, an AP round from a rifle will go through five zombies in a row, which is the primary principle of the base and why it aims to channel the zombies into a big line. What I did confirm was that while shooting through a zombie normally will hit 5, shooting through a corpse will only hit 4, so the corpse definitely still counts as a zombie. This means that every time a corpse sits at the front of the corridor and we shoot through it, we are reducing the potential damage that can be done to the zombies behind it, so improving the way the base drops corpses and bags is something that we should definitely aim for. While some people suggested using powered doors underneath that could be opened on demand, my goal for this change is to make something that is always on and automatic, so that it's not a distraction during the horde. The first change I made was to use the Wedge 60 blocks, but as you can see this introduced a strange pathing behaviour on the part of the zombies, who then used the slope to walk around the electric fences and dodge all of the defences, so that one's a fail. Next I tried using the Wedge Narrow High block, with the extra slope designed to allow the zombies to slide off more easily, and a standard pole side centred on our left to create the gap through which the zombies and bags can slide. This worked okay, but the zombies often got stuck between the wedge high block and the pole, and I also realised that I wouldn't be able to make this double sided, as the pole block on the other side would block the dart traps, and there's no equivalent to the wedge arrow high block that has a slope on both sides. I then tried an approach using the cube one half blocks set on opposite rotations to create large gaps in between them. The thinking here was that the zombies would fall down into the gaps between. Unfortunately this works a little bit too well, while the zombies fall down well once they've been killed. They also fall down really really well even when they've just been electrocuted. This then results in a loss of overall XP as the zombies spend more time looping around than they do getting shot. From there I tried a bunch more options and I'll show you during the build process exactly what I finally landed on. But to get there, we need to take down this base and start building a new one. Now that we've got things cleared out again, we're going to start with the center pole, leave a gap of three blocks, then a gap of five blocks, then another gap of five blocks, and that will be the foundation pillars for the left hand side of the base. We'll repeat that on the other side, leave three blocks, put a pillar, go five blocks, put another pillar, and another five blocks for the last pillar. Returning to the center pole, we then need to go into block gap, and put a block there, then come over three blocks again to match the other one, and three blocks out the other side, match there. From those blocks, we can go in three again, three again, and pull the block down, and repeat that over the far side, three block gap and a block, three block gap and a block. Lastly, coming into the middle, we can put a three block gap and one in the middle to match the far side. These are the fundamental pillars for the main section of the base, and if we pop up in the air, this is how it should look. If we add in the foot footings for the bunker section, we need to leave a gap of seven blocks, and on the eighth spot put in the foundation, then leave a gap of three blocks and another foundation pillar. Jumping up, this is how the final layout should look now. From there, we need to build out the first ramp. Starting with a ramp, 
we'll put one on the outside. Then grabbing our ramp outside corner full, we put those in the four edges around the side to make sure that the zombies have a nice smooth entrance upwards onto the ramp. From here, we're just going to use ramp blocks, standard one on top, rotated normally, and then a second ramp block, rotated underneath to give it a nice smooth upwards direction. We then continue the ramp blocks up until they're next to the space that would be occupied by the pillar built up vertically from the next foundation. As you can see, that's next to it now. So we need to go back to our cube block and build upwards until it joins up with the ramp. Like that. Now we can go back to our ramp blocks and continue the path. We'll get to the point soon that we won't be able to do it from underneath. I think we're at that now. I don't trust my jumping ability to time that right. So we'll now build from the top and sneak these on the edge. You could obviously do frames and you build yourself a little scaffold so you didn't have to do it like this. But for this video, I'll just build on the side. Once again, we continue up until the ramp is next to where the foundation would extend upwards to. Just double check whether we're at that point right now. We know it's a gap of five, but I didn't count on the way over. And if you're not sure, you can always just come and build this up. And realize that it's not quite there. So you continue the ramp one more. Get that rotation around the right way. There we go. And now we have our ramp connected up to the top. At this point, we can start moving across horizontally. So we get our cube block back, build this column all the way up to the same height, which should be 13 off the ground. And then we can connect it up across. Like that. We now have one side of our ramp built all the way up to the middle pillar, and we can repeat that process on the other side. Once the other side is complete, here's how the entrance ramps will look. The next step is to extend all of the foundation blocks up 12 more so that they're all at 13 blocks high. The one other change that I did make is this middle foundation pillar here. I've changed from a cube block to a cube quarter side centered, rotated away from the bunker. This is important for the build once we get to the central walkway, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now it's time to connect up the pillars and start to block out the main section of the base. We go out to the pillar and then one block past on both sides like this. From there, we connect up the outside of the base to the other pillars, extending it out all the way like this. We know that it's 10 blocks from the edge, so we actually need to go out one block past this front row of pillars like so. Coming around, we need to repeat this on the other side as well, so that it's the same on both sides. From there, we need to add in another row of blocks so that we can build the wall that separates the ramp up from the main section of the base. If we want to match the styling of the previous video, we need the chevron blocks to point the way to the entrance of the crawling corridor. Can pop them in like this. And then pop some cube blocks on top. Repeat that on the other side. Add them in. And then add the cube blocks again on top. On top of this, we can then put in the rest of the wall which is a section five blocks long. So starting two in, one in the middle and two in again, and then one more layer on top. This section of the wall is designed to stop any zombies from piling up on top of each other before they go into the crawling corridor and then get over on top of the base where the traps are. This is what your base should look like once this section is complete. Heading back inside the base, we now need to add in some of the floor section. This involves adding in cube blocks and another two rows on both sides of the base.
Next it's time to start with the all important section leading down the middle of the base. What I ended up going with is a 50-50 build of cube one half centered and cube one quarter side centered blocks. When added together, these will create small gaps in the path that the zombies and loot bags can fall down when they get pushed over them. The back section is just centered cube one half blocks because that's where most of the zombies will be piling up as they enter the crawling corridor, so we don't want them pushed off to the sides or down just there. Next we need to line the sides with the metal trussing 3D blocks. And once done, it will look like this. From there, we add in four blocks at the beginning of the path with another row of metal trussing 3D blocks. These are designed to hold the zombies in place as they enter in the crawling corridor and get zapped and pile up a little bit and tend to push each other off the side. For the rest of the corridor, I'm putting in the tube three meter tunnel center block. These are designed to again, hold the zombies in place a little bit while they're being zapped, but allow enough space for the corpses and bags to fall down through the gaps onto the side. There's probably a bunch of blocks that you could use to achieve this, but this is the one that I've selected. Let me know when you're building your versions though, if you find another block that does a better job. On top of this, we just put in standard cube blocks across both rows of the metal trussing 3D blocks. And lastly, down the middle, we need to put in the wedge tip stair block, rotated to the top, like so, so that zombies entering the tunnel will be forced to crawl, which gives us our nice easy headshots and stops us from hitting the demo button. You can see, once we come back around the front, this is how the base will look as the zombies come through and you can walk across the center just like so. To finish off the main platform of the base, if we lay out where the dart trap, the trip wire and the electric fence will go, we can see that while this fence would place well, any other fences further down towards us will have nothing to lean against to hold them upright. As a result, we need to put some plate blocks on the side of the base to hold the electric fences up. To do this, I just edge out to the side like this and we can pop them in all the way down just like this. Jumping over to the other side, on this side, since we don't have the dart traps, we only need a tripwire and electric fence. So rather than popping them on the outside, we can actually just pop them on this third block. It makes the base slightly asymmetrical, but not so much that you'd notice looking at it at a glance. Once that's complete, the main frame is almost done and should look like this. From here, it's time to pop in the traps with eight electric fences down this side, eight down this side, then eight trip wires in front, repeated on the other side, and finally eight dart traps rotated to point inwards on this side only. We won't wire them up just yet, we'll wait till we've got the generator and all the electrics in place. Next up, it's time to look at the bunker. Firstly, we need to put a ladder on the outside for us to climb up. And then I have to confess to making a small mistake on this pillar. Whilst I've made all of the pillars 13 blocks tall, this one should actually only be 12. That's to allow the extra slope for us to stand on so that we can line up our shots straight down the, the 13 high block of the main base. At 12 blocks, it's still outside of the rage mode limit, so we're safe from that, which is one of the primary reasons that the other section of the base is 13 tall. For the bunker section of the base, you can build it however you like. The way I've done it is cube blocks along here, and then ramp blocks on each side going out two blocks. To add them in, you add the first row this side, and then pop in a cube block on the corner, like so so that we've got something to attach the next row of ramp blocks to. This can add a little bit of instability to the build, but if you're building all with concrete, it performs just fine. Since I'm talking about building with concrete, one thing to note, with the pillars that we added at the beginning, the spacing is correct for concrete builds. If you're starting with wood though, 
and building up, you're going to need to add some extra pillars to provide additional stability to the base. Once that's done, we can repeat it on the left hand side. Like so. Building up from there, we're just going back to normal cube blocks and building up the walls three blocks high all the way around. Except for at the front where we need to leave space for our combat section. On top of the wall, we need to add in ramp blocks to form back towards the roof, just so that it's not one big ugly box. Repeat the same on the right hand side. And there's the walls done. On the front floor section, we're going to be using the wedge 60 blocks, the taller one there and the wedge 60 tip down below to give us a nice smooth sniping section. Finishing off the back wall now, we can add in some more cube blocks. Then add in the ladder. And finish off the roof. Next it's time to build the sea drop. We're using the Catwalk V1 plate only and Catwalk V1 plate only wedge. The blocks need to be rotated to the top of the section and then placed three wide with the straight block like so. Then our first wedge bringing that out towards the main base. Back to the straight block. Coming out so that we can build that out like this. Got to make sure the train tracks obviously line up. And then trying to jump across so that we can build from the other side. I have failed. Let's try that again. And we should be able to just reach and build in another wedge taking it out to the left as we're facing now. Add one more so that it's a two wide wedge section and then start to bring it back in with three blocks. One, two, three, like so. And then we need to go back towards the main bunker with one, line it up again, come on. Two blocks like that. And lastly, one more block coming back towards one more wedge. You can sneak over here like so. And then straight blocks to connect it back up to the main path. Not the most straightforward thing to build, but like we've seen in the other video, an effective method at dropping zombies down. With that complete, we can now put in our combat blocks. I'm going to use my standard pole doubles on the bottom, pole doubles on the top, and the double pillar 0.05 in the middle. Finishing off the bunker, we can add in the door there. Looks like we forgot a couple of cube blocks them in now. Head upstairs and we can put in the hatch. And that is our bunker pretty much complete. One little touch that we need to add in is the plate bracket centered block. I'm going to add this to the wall for our spotlights. We need to check the rotation and then add the block in down the bottom. Rotate it again around, then add it on the other side. On these blocks is where our spotlights are going to sit. While we're here, we can pop them in, like so. And the same on the other side. Next, it's time to build the ramp so that we can cross from one base to the other from the inside. And we're going to do that with the slope plate 01, 2, 3, and 4 blocks. Adding in each in turn. We 
can start to build the ramp, and then just need the filler block to go and connect the two segments together, which I can't see right now. There it is. Repeating again, the four, three, two, and one blocks will connect it all the way up to the top of the base. If you're worried about zombies getting onto the top, you might not want to connect that up and make it a full part, but I don't think it's actually a problem. Now that that's done, we can add in our spotlights so that we can see up the back section of the base, as was suggested. Then add in the generator bank. From the original video, I placed it on the roof, like here. But since those blocks did take a little bit of damage from cops blowing up, I think this time we'll place it up on the back wall. Throwing in some engines and some fuel, we can now start with the wiring. The wiring for this section of the base is fairly straightforward, but it does help to have some relays. Putting in a relay this side and the same on the other side means we've got a nice easy connection point to run from the generator bank that we don't need to worry about running everything from the one spot. We want the spotlights always on so they connect up directly to the generator bank and from there we can hook up each of the wire relays. This side wire relay connects initially to the electric fences. And then each fence is connected across like so. On the other side, connect up the relay to each of the trip wires. Then each of the trip wires to the corresponding trip wire on the other side. And then each trip wire to its corresponding dart trap. Lastly, we can add another wire relay to the front, connect that up, and then connect that across to the spotlights so that these spotlights are always on as well. The last thing we need to do is load up each of the dart traps with 1500 darts so that they will last the horde night. Once that's done, we can turn on the generator so that it's ready for the horde and head back across. We also need to quickly put in our spike traps for the vultures. Head inside, shut the hatch, and we're ready just in time for horde. zombies coming through now. Got a cop first up. They seem to be the least likely to want to get zapped down low. At least some of them once they start spitting anyway. As you can see some of the bodies still get trapped by those 3D truss blocks at the top which isn't the best but they will get pushed out of the way as more zombies come through. Same with this blue loot bag. Once we stop to reload should get a zombie through far enough to push it down and it's knocked it over but hasn't quite pushed it out of the way but that should do for now. There we go, gets knocked out of the way by a friendly nurse who then falls out of the way. Perfect. As discussed, the design is a bit of a balance between keeping the zombies contained so they don't fall off before we kill them and allowing enough space for the zombie corpses and loot bags to fall down. I think this is the best combination so far, at least from what I've tried, but it might not be the best one out there, something that we'll have to keep playing with. So that's how to build the base with the improvements that were suggested from the original video. The question then is, did it make a difference? And the answer is yes, but not as big as I'd expected. The main difference was that with the new design, there was an increase of about 27,000 XP on Horde Knight, which sounds good, but ultimately only took the game from 727,000 to 754,000, which still has its second overall when compared to the explosive pit. 
The noticeable difference though with the redesign and when using Recog is that there were numerous periods of quiet where there were no zombies to fight as they were all still making their way up the ramp. The new design though did lead to an ammo cost down about 22%, repair cost down about half, and combined with a slightly cheaper build cost, the efficiency score gets a healthy jump up from 15.9 to 20.9. The main issue I think the base now has is the length of time it takes for a zombie to get from spawning across to the ramps and up into the base. Because it's such a long distance, particularly if the zombies spawn behind the bunker and furthest away from the ramps, this is now limiting the maximum XP that can be achieved by the base. Future modifications might need to explore changing the ramps to provide a shorter or faster path up either by changing the direction, adding more ramps, or making them less steep which might be faster for the zombies to run along. Alternately, we could chop out the height, further reducing the build cost by adding damage and repair cost from rage mode. Although this would be minimized by the fact that very few zombies drop down, there would still be rage mode on the first run in that we would have to deal with. Either way, thanks again so much for your suggestions for this base. I hope you enjoyed seeing them being incorporated into this improved version along with the build guide. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was useful and please subscribe if you'd like to see more Horde base videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.